In this last video, we're going to uh, be looking at choosing an appropriate test or method based on kind of the data situation that we might see. Um, so I'm just going to be kind of doing these practice problems um, at the end of the chapter, um, reviewing some of uh, you know, the ideas talked about in the previous pages, um, just kind of um, summarizing some of the different tests and methods that we've talked about in this class. Um, so. Now, a couple of these um, involve chi-square testing, which we skipped this semester, so I won't be um, bothering with those. Um, so I guess it would be 3 and, and 6 um, what would be chi-square testing. Um, but 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and, oops, or sorry, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7, though, um, would be relevant um, to things that we've talked about this semester. So um, the first question here, a sales associate is interested in examining whether there is a relationship between how much time customers spend in a store and how much money they will eventually spend when they check out. So to kind of unpack these, um, to decide what would be appropriate, um, we really just kind of look at what types of data um, are present here, um, as well as kind of the questions secondarily, but mostly we're gonna kind of focus on the, the type of data that's present. So the first one we have is how much time um, customers spend in the, in the store. The second one is going to be how much money they will eventually spend. So time and money both um, would be continuous uh, numeric variables. So if I'm trying to look at the relationship between two numeric variables, I can kind of think about how I would plot that, um, is that I'm going to have kind of, let's see, maybe time here on the x-axis as a predictor of money. And so I can kind of imagine that I have observations um, where I can see how much time somebody spends and how much money that they spend. And I might see kind of like, you know, maybe some, some bit of a relationship here uh, between these two variables. And um, so this would be kind of appropriate toward uh, simple linear regression. Um, I assume linear. I mean, you know, I guess the relationship could be about anything, but... Um, this would likely be what I would kind of start with at least um, because it's kind of a, a one predictor variable um, as a predictor for a one response variable um, and being through numeric variables, regression would make a lot of sense of trying to kind of fit a line that fits that relationship. Um, the second question here, a psychologist would like to know if patients report different levels of anxiety while in the doctor's waiting room, as measured on a scale from 1 to 10, depending on whether the color of the waiting room is white, yellow, or red. Okay, so the first variable here is going to be anxiety, uh, or levels of anxiety as measured on a scale from 1 to 10. Um, the second variable here is going to be the color of the waiting room, whether the color of the waiting room matters in um, somebody's anxiety in, in the doctor's waiting room. So color would be kind of the second variable here. So if I think about kind of plotting this, I want to know if the color, red, um, white, or yellow, uh, might matter in looking at anxiety levels. So here I have kind of anxiety levels from, you know, 1 to 10. So then I'm going to have a couple people report their anxiety level for each kind of room color here. And I'm curious to know if there's a difference in average anxiety levels depending on um, the room color here. So since I have three groups, so, so kind of notice I have three groups, um, and I'm probably going to be doing a comparison of means. It doesn't actually say that explicitly, um, but I am comparing um, uh, the anxiety levels. So, so mean would be kind of a likely candidate for the parameter I want to compare there. Um, so if comparing means, then this would be a good candidate for um, a one-way ANOVA comparison. Um, we didn't really talk about two-way ANOVA. I mean, that would be an option if we have two or more predictor variables, uh, including categorical variables to predict anxiety level. Um, but in this case, um, we just learned ANOVA, where we have a comparison of three or more groups um, would be appropriate to use ANOVA. 
Um, skipping down to number four, researchers are studying whether people report the same average stress scores both before and after petting a dog. So is petting a dog, spending time with a dog, possibly helpful in um, reducing stress? So if you think about it this way, I really had the same people reporting a before and after measure. So I kind of have like a, we'll say before, we'll say after here. And then we're looking at kind of stress scores would be some kind of numeric variable here. And so I have an individual who has kind of a before measurement, an after measurement, and then I can kind of see that change for that individual. Um, I have another individual, maybe their, maybe their stress score actually went higher. Um, and so you get this kind of idea that I'm like comparing people before and after. I have kind of this pre-post situation. So this would be um, a, a paired t-test would be a really appropriate method to try to answer this question. Um, oops, I left a t there. Paired t-test. Um, and we can use the paired t-test because um, our measurements are paired together between the two groups that I'm comparing. So I have before measurements, I have after measurements, and they're paired together by the person who contributed them. So I can do a slightly more efficient test than say an independent samples t-test, where you know, sometimes we just call it a two-sample t-test if it's independent like that. Um, next we have um, a veterinarian is um, interested in studying whether dog owners are willing to spend more on their pet on average than cat owners. Um, so this is another kind of um, two-group two comparison um, this, however, is not going to be necessarily paired measurement. So unless I had like owners who had a dog and a cat and I wanted to see if there is a difference, I mean, that could be a paired comparison. But um, here it doesn't necessarily look like that. Um, we just have some dog owners, we have some cat owners, and we're looking at how much they spend on their cat, whether at the, the vet's office or on other, you know, supplies, whatever, for their pet. Um, and so kind of, all right, spending here on the y-axis... And so I'm just curious if maybe if I kind of look at these, you know, scores for dog owners versus cat owners, is there going to be kind of a difference here in the average amount um, that they're spending? So this would be an independent samples t-test, assuming that these are kind of separate independent groups. Oops, again, I need to say t-test. And we can, again, also say two sample, that, that kind of works as well. Independent sample is a little bit more specific, um, just because a pair of t-test could sort of also be called a two sample t-test, but usually we just say pair t-test clearly. Um, so independent samples t-test would be two independent groups. And then the last question here, a pharmaceutical researcher is interested in investigating whether he can predict the probability of a patient's survival from a particular disease well on experimental medication, using the patient's age, BMI, smoking status, and average blood pressure as predictors. Okay, so we have a lot of predictors here, right? So we have patient's age, BMI, smoking status, and average blood pressure um, as predictors. And the response variable here is going to be the probability of a patient's survival. So we're trying to um, predict whether the patient will survive or not um, and model kind of their likelihood of survival based on these factors. So since we're trying to, since our response variable here is really a binary variable, um, survival, and we're trying to kind of model their likelihood for survival, that would be logistic regression. So remember that logistic regression is used to kind of um, model a binary response. And in this case, we could also um, be more specific if this is multiple logistic regression, not that you know, it's necessarily like super important to specify, um, but multiple in just the sense that we have multiple predictors in this model that we're using. So, so multiple logistic regression, we have kind of you know, patients who survive, patients who don't survive, and maybe we have some data here based on information. That should be a straight line. Um, so um, now, now the graph is kind of hard to make because the graph is usually only sensible if I only have one predictor. But if I only had one, let's say I had just age here, then maybe I notice that patients who are younger um, are more likely 
or actually if, if one is survival, you know, maybe I should be clear here. Actually, let me just fix this whole thing. So, so if one were survival, maybe younger patients are more likely to survive, whereas older patients maybe are less likely to survive, more likely to die. Um, so that would be logistic regression. And since I have more than one predictor variable that I'm fitting into this model, it would be multiple logistic regression in that case. Um, all right, and I guess that closes things up, so, so we are done.